All right, hey guys, Jason here, Sam Co. Workshop. Today we're gonna to be talking about three things that it, kind of a Jeep quiz. Do you know this about your Jeep? And if you don't, maybe you will now. So we're gonna talk about those three simple things that not a lot of people pay attention to uh, that Jeep has done right and how you can use them to your advantage. So uh, first thing here, you can see that we're kind of going through a rut here, through this area here and here. And uh, many of you guys may or may not know this, but can I ask, or I'll ask you first, do you know what side of your vehicle your front differential is on? Why do you need to know that? Well, when you're dealing with obstacles, for example, you see we got this big trench right here that we're going to be going over. You want to know where that differential is so you know where to put whatever the obstacle is, whether it's a rock in the trail. If this was a, a huge rock that was here and this was sticking up somewhere and sticking up high, big, big boulder that was here, um, for example, we want to know that if we straddle that, how are we going to hit it or not hit it? So your differential under here is offset to one side. If we look underneath this now, we come in here and look. Let me get in here where you can see better. We can see that the front diff is on the driver's side right here. Okay, and it does hang down a little bit lower. So you can see that if you want to straddle something like this berm, where we're buried in and rolling downhill here, but by putting this berm on the passenger side, I have that gap, that channel there between, you can see the rear diff in the back there, but I can straddle that by putting that on there and not hit it with that diff. But if I were to put this berm and move the Jeep over, we could be hitting that front diff on this side. So by knowing that, we know that we wanna straddle something like this whatever the obstacle is or our big rock here if that was a boulder if you're out west and you're dealing with rocks we want to put any obstacle that we got to straddle over right through here right where that tow hook is on that left side is where we want to be or somewhere right in that general area is where we want to put that obstacle to get full clearance because again we have that front diff hanging down a little bit lower there that we don't want to have to deal with banging or beating up. Or even out here, we don't want to be keep dragging it through the mud and all that kind of stuff. So that offset is where that front diff is, which makes it advantageous. Now, another thing we're going to talk about on here too, if we take this Jeep, is or another question I will actually ask it to you as a, sorry, I'm sinking in the mud like crazy here. Um, but another one is where is your air box on here? Why does it matter? Where's your air intake on this Jeep? Okay, something else the Jeep does well. Okay, whether they designed it for this reason or it just happened for this reason. But if we take and we want to lift the hood on here and we want to see now before I do again, ask you, do you know where your air box is? Okay, do you know where your air intake is for this particular vehicle? It's important that you do if you're going to be spending much time off-road. So if we pop this, I'm going to pause this while I actually open the hood. All right, we got the hood open. Here is our air intake. This right here is where the air gets sucked into the engine, right here. Why do we want to know that it's here and that it is on the passenger side right there? We want to know that so that we know if we have to go into water or we're going to go into puddles and things like that, we want to avoid at all costs to try to prevent getting water into this air intake. How does that happen? Well, look at the angle that this Jeep is sitting on as we stand down here in this hole again. Okay, if this was filled with water, we want to put our driver's side down in the water and keep our passenger side up on the berm or the high side of that so that the Jeep tips this way, keeping that air intake up out of the water. If water's splashing up on this side and rolling into that front grill and everything, you're okay. This is a side you want to protect and not have that water doing that to avoid getting water sucked into this air intake which basically sucks water directly into your motor so by having that over here and given the fact that we here in america we drive on the right side of the road um, typically we would want to hit things like this if this was filled with water we are going to be on this side we can run that high berm keeping that air intake up and high and higher even so because of the angle that that hole will be in and protect that. If you were to run the other side and drop this side down, good chance of water getting to that. So that is why that protection factor is there and how you and why you want to know where your air intake is. On your Jeep, it is sitting over here on the passenger side. So those two things end up being air intake on the passenger side, 
front diff on the driver's side. When you're going over obstacles, put the obstacle on your passenger side. When you are going through water, protect your passenger side. Okay, the exact opposite. Going over obstacles, protect your driver's side. Going through water, protect your passenger side. That's basically the, that boiled down in a nutshell. All right, now on the inside, the third one we wanna talk about is putting your vehicle in neutral. Now with a Jeep, how do you put this thing into neutral? You can see right now we are in too high. You can see it right there on the gauge, right there too high on the transfer case. We are in neutral. If I take this controller and I just push this to neutral, am I in neutral? Sort of, a little bit right now because I'm in it, okay? So I'm in it right now and I'm sort of in neutral, but watch what happens when I, see it says press, press brake, shift into gear, okay? That's easy to do, we understand it. But watch what happens if I were to like to try to winch this vehicle. Say I was gonna self winch it and I wanted to get out of the vehicle to do that. Um, or whatever the case is, or somebody else is going to winch me out of a hole. If I, that is not neutral from the fact that watch what happens when I touch the doorknob. I'm going to open the door. Let's zoom me in a little bit so you can see the dash layout. We're going to open the door. Auto park engaged, shift to park, then shift into gear. Now I close the door. Same thing. Notice how neutral is flashing down here. It's got an auto park engaged. It's not letting me. So I cannot open my door and get out of that. Now, if I press on the brake and we go back to park, it clears. Okay, so we are now clear and I can go back to neutral. And I says I'm in neutral. Okay, see, there's our original message. We are in neutral. But the second I open this door again, which we're going to open, we get that same, even if I close the door, neutral flashing, auto park feature set right there, auto park engaged flashing down there does not work that way the way that you get this vehicle to go into neutral again we got to clear that we'll put it in park okay what we have to do is get the transfer case in neutral as well too which is going to bypass and override that so we put it in neutral like that then we are going to put our transfer case into neutral which can be a little tricky sometimes there we go now we wait for it to stop flashing and still neutral now our transfer case is in neutral Gives you a warning, four wheel drive, neutral warning, vehicle may move even when in park because this totally disengages the, dr the drive shaft. But now we are neutral. Now what happens when I open the door? Vehicle not in park is what it tells us. Okay, but notice we don't have neutral flashing there. This is still engaged in neutral. Right now we are 100% in neutral and ready to be able to be winched out or whatever we have to do with nothing holding you back. No auto park feature set, no anything. So if you want to put a, a Jeep in neutral, that is your process to do it, to get it so that you get full real, rear full real neutral capability out of it so um that's basically it you got to have both this has got to be a neutral and this has got to be a neutral or commonly referred to we call it double neutral okay both the actual transmission and the transfer case both the neutral that's how you're going to be able to make that happen so little quick video little quick ideas and tips here for you on how to uh a couple things that you may or may not know about your jeep but those are things that you got to they, they come into play when you're out here and you're in the woods and you're doing things that are a matter that matter to you. For me, the biggest one is the air filter location with the water that I end up going through and the stuff like that and the holes I get in. Also, that differential location is important, not for rocks out here for me, but for getting hung up on, on the, the ruts like you just saw us do and the stuff we were in. If I pop out of here and we look at that, what we do... Okay, so stuff to keep in mind and consider for you. A little bit of tips for you. A few things to, you know, just to see if you knew them and what you could do with them. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.